All right, so we're continuing with football on the Sportsmax Zone. Trinidad and Tobago and their Soka Warriors will host Jamaica's Reggae Boys in two friendly matches. The first will be played at the Hazley Crawford Stadium on Friday, while the second will be on Sunday at the Larry Gomes Stadium. But both teams are utilizing mostly local-based players. Let's take a look at the squads now. So for Trinidad and Tobago, we have Denzel Smith, Adrian Fonset, Christopher Baguette as goalkeepers for the defenders, Alvin Jones, Jamal Jack, Robert Primus, Justin Garcia, Josiah Trimingham, Chavonez Hamilton and Ross Russell Jr. What about in the midfield? Dwayne Moquette, John Paul Rochford, Justin Sadu, Kele Ovre, Kai Moose, Kevon Goddard, Liam Burns, Nathaniel Garcia, Mitchell Poon Angaron, Kai Garvey, Rondell Gibson, and Kahim Thomas. And the forwards, Nathaniel James, Michael Jem Gordon, Michael Chavez, and Justin Obiku. What about Jamaica now? Their goalkeepers are Kimar Foster, Shaquan Davis, Jaden Hibbert, defenders Kyle Ming, Richard King, Goth Stewart, Ricardo Thomas, Sule Makala, Stephen Young, Joel Cunningham, and Elidio Rousseau. In the midfield, they have Alex Marshall, Shamir Smith, Joshon Anglin, Romeo Cosri, and Jamon Shepard. The forwards are Kahim Dixon, Fabian Reed, Chanel Thomas, Jason Wright, Justin Dunn, Andrew Fletcher, and Devante Campbell. Well, the Soka Warriors head coach, that's Angus Eve. He spoke on the importance of giving the local-based players opportunities such as these. Looking at the league, you know, I, I said from the outset that when the league first started, we probably wouldn't see the fruits uh, immediately. And um, this second season, we're starting to see no players coming to the fore. And, um, you know, look, young Burns and these young um, these players, um, Gibson, who played for Eagles. Um, so we, we, we looked at them. And we thought uh, we even saw some uh, senior players like uh, Primus, uh, you know, he's playing really well for Police FC. So, you know, um, Fonset is safe and excellent also. So the new players, uh, we have some new players. Um, unfortunately, some of them got injured in the in the last couple of games uh, in the Pro League matches. And, and so they're not here right now. Um, Lee Cock, who, who, who I think he's gone to Army now from uh, AC Port of Spain. He's been doing very, very well, but has a knee injury. Um, David. Um, from from Rangers, he was doing really well. We wanted him in. We had him in the camp. He has a knee injury. Isaiah Lee, who's been playing very well for Rangers, he's also injured and so can't be in the group now. So there's a number of players that we wanted to be here and, and can't be here because of injury. And then that the, the other ones that we have them here and, and fully hope that they participate and do well so that we could go forward with the best team possible. Yeah, well, the sole foreign-based reggae boy goalkeeper Jaden Hibbert who was picked at number 19 in the 2024 MLS Super Draft, says he's delighted to be named in this squad. Yeah, I was ecstatic, man. I mean, uh, you know, a, na a national team for, for any country is amazing to represent. Um, my family back home was couldn't be happier for me, so it's a great opportunity. I uh, hope it continues in the future. All right, so our very own Brent Sanjo is still with us. And Brent, of course, we're getting ready for this international friendly. Very important that two Caribbean football powerhouses are going to be up against each other. I'll start by asking you one about what Angus Eve had to say about, you know, the importance of including the local based players. Well, let me start by saying that I don't think the word friendly and a game between Trinidad and Jamaica goes hand in hand. Uh, from even from my oh, recollection, of Brent, the game, no. there is no, there's there is no such thing as friendly because of course of the rivalry and the history of the rivalry. I mean, I've I've, I've played in games and CAC games where we they, it was as they said everything was left on that pitch and and even when we go on. And we went on to the, the quarterfinals. The same Jamaican team that we fought with, uh, they were there cheering us on against Venezuela. But yeah. it shows you the type of rivalry that the both countries have when it comes to football. This is not good. Let me it, tell it you. Is a, listen, it's about it's about bragging rights. It's about everything that comes with the Caribbean, King of the Caribbean, 
the best footballing team in the Caribbean. And so when you try to, of course, put together friendly and try to be versus Jamaica, it never really comes up because there's so much at stake. And that's the point I'm making. Uh, of course, we talk about the fact that there are a lot of these kids have an opportunity to maybe get and force their way into uh, the set the game against uh, Canada and USA, respectively, because there is a situation uh, where teams, uh, as Angus rightfully mentioned, from the respective domestic league having an opportunity to play. Uh, but again, as I said, there's so much at stake when, when a Trinidad and Tobago versus Jamaica game comes about that it brings it to life. And, and I'm very sure uh, in both games on Friday and Sunday that despite the fact that the wood friendly is starting next day, the end result is going to be very important for both nations. Brent, Brent. Did, you, did you listen, did you watch at the top of the show, oh. Brent? I watch very well, and I, I stand by my statement. There is, uh, there, there is no such... From my history of playing, I know... Listen, it's the same thing you could say in a preseason friendly between Manchester United and Man City, the USA, Japan, China, or anywhere else. They're still going... Or Manchester United against Liverpool, there's still going to be a lot to play for because, again, the history that uh, these, the, these teams have, similarly, Trinidad and Jamaica have the similar sort of history when it comes to rivalry. Uh, I expect the game to be played at uh, at a frantic pace and also with, with some sort of passion and, and cause behind it. Oh, no, Brent. I was trying to make <laughs> a case for myself and I was explaining to them that both coaches have a really good relationship and they're actually using these matches to, of course, benefit the teams moving forward. No, look, there is a lot of benefit for it. And, and you know, I, I remember Lance asked me a question a couple of weeks back about, uh, of course, the U20s and, and why we're, we're, we're a little bit behind. Because these sorts of games are lacking. They, they, you don't see out of the window, out of the FIFA window friendlies. A lot of the countries don't play it. And to be able to play a game like this outside of the, the FIFA window is critical for, for these countries. Uh, because the Trinidad versus Grenada, Trinidad, Guyana, those sorts of games that played uh, during the week outside the windows was very important for the development of young players. Uh, but you don't see it anymore. And, and, and I have to give credit to, to both associations for putting together this game because how important is it? Because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of these guys, I believe Jamaica has 14 uncapped players and within the squad, Trinidad has a, 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 a whole list as well of players that have not been capped at that level. So it gives them an, a chance to experience international football uh, in a competitive environment. And, and, and that's exactly what this game brings. It, it really helps uh, a, a both sets of camps in their preparation towards. Although a lot of the kids that are participating in, in this fixture may not feature in the game later on in March for either country, the fact of the matter is they're getting international experience, which helps in their development. Well, since all the men on the team think that it's some um, big rivalries, I'll use it this. Is. The question is, who walks away with the who walks away with the win in this rivalry? <laughs> well, I think it's it's going to be a, a game for you know to look at. There's different subplots in it. I think for Trinidad and Tobago, the likes of Over and James that now play their trade at Mount Pleasant, who are on the cusp of of, of national team uh, setup and starting in a couple of games during the, the Nations League, uh, they would be wanting to, of course, impress their coach. So they would be on that trip. When you look at Josiah Tringham, Tringham who's now playing uh, at Montego Bay and having a decent season there for, for Montego Bay, he would want to try to impress because that's an area of the pitch where the Toronto Bay is a bit deficient defensively. So there are those subplots. And for Jamaica, of course, young Hibbert, who we just highlighted, uh, a, a young man has been just uh, recruited from uh, recruited by Atlanta United. He would want to impress. We already know uh, the spoils of riches that Jamaica has as it relates to their selection of the overseas players. He would try to one of four, five uh, forces win. Of course, the evergreen Fabian Reed. Uh, he he would certainly want to try to impress. And of course, Kamal Foster, the goalkeeper, who I thought who I who I think is having an ex exceptional season. I think will also try to squeeze in. So. There are a lot of subplots within there where, 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 where players will be looking at this as an opportunity to impress their respective coaches and force their way into the final recording. Uh, and I think that in itself is what's going to make, as well as, as I mentioned, the rivalry will make this game very, very competitive and very hard to call. Yeah, but admittedly, Brent, a small percentage of the players who will be seeing on the weekend would be likely to be in those Nations League and uh, Copa America playing matches that TNT and the Jamaicans have on their table in the coming weeks? 
Yeah, and that's a factor. And, and again, it, it's always good, and I think for, for any nation to have a big pool of players that have been bloodied at the international level. As you know, Lance, football is an unpredictable sport and players, as Angus mentioned, a couple of players already injured who would have been called into the squad uh, moving forward to March. You don't know what can happen between now and, and the selection of the squad to go to play against Canada, what could transpire. Same thing for Jamaica, what happens before they play the U.S. if, if players are hurt and injured. And a good performance. I've seen players, uh, and a very good example of this is, is a young man called Evans Wise that played with me in the 2006 World Cup. Didn't play one minute of World Cup qualifiers leading up to the World Cup, but had a very impressive, friendly game. I believe it was against Grenada here in Trinidad Tobago and forced himself into the finals pool of players that went to Germany back in 2006. So at the end of the day, it's extremely important for these players to have a good showing. Yes, it may seem now that a huge percentage is not possibly in the reckoning, but with a good showing and, of course, uh, situations happening, they can find themselves on a plane heading to, towards these fixtures. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're gonna we're gonna leave it there. Um, uh, we will continue to monitor what happens over the weekend because, um, as you mentioned, it's a very important fixture for for both these teams that they as they get ready um, for Canada and the USA respectively. Thanks, Brent. All right, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. We'll be back with more on the Sports Match Zone after this.